every gray cloud has a silver lining. Let me unpack this for you. Having lived through the past two and a half years, there's no doubt that there's a lot of us who've lost confidence in the political process. Not that we had maybe a ton of it to begin with, but whatever shred we had left, it's been eroded. The policies that our leaders have effectively put in place, the rights they've stripped away, the uh, disregard for the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, have left a lot of us disillusioned with the process. However, my friends, there is a silver lining. Due to all of their overreaching, overarching, uh, draconian measures they've taken, there are people who've come to the realization that the system's broken and it needs to be fixed. But more importantly, they've realized that the fixing must be done by them and each and every one of us. I, I, I saw this firsthand in action last night. I was invited to a Viva, me, uh, Viva launch. Viva is the Vancouver Island Voters Association. It's a local uh, association that was set up in response to the upcoming municipal and school board elections that are coming up. This was founded by a couple of people who felt, you know what? If change is going to happen, we're going to have to be part of it. We're going to have to have local uh, citizens who are like-minded engage in the process. And we can no longer sit on the sidelines and say, it's somebody else's problem to fix. There, I met some passionate people, people who weren't career politicians. These were just ordinary people. I met a single mom who had a, base, who had a four-year-old. She is running for school board trustee. Why is she running? Because she wants a better future for her daughter and the other children out there. She feels that the schools are indoctrination camps now. They're not teaching the basics. They're not teaching civics. I met retired school teachers who are now running. These are people who should be having their best life sitting on a beach sipping pina coladas. However, they've realized they need to step into the ring, into the fight. Why are they stepping in? They feel that teaching is not where it used to be. Teachers are no longer, and there, there's no doubt, I'm sure there's teachers out there who still have the best intention of their students at heart. But there are teachers who are misguided, who are now following blindly a policy, uh, an agenda of all of this wokeism and this transgenderism and everything else, and elevating it to a status above education. And more importantly, these teachers recognize the fact that the school districts, the school board, the uh, provincial government that's uh, handing down the power to these associations is trying to strip away parental rights. The parent is being removed from the child-parent relationship and the school is replacing them and that's wrong. And these people recognize it and they're willing to call it out. I met some local people running for city council. These are people who actually have a platform. They've thought through policy. Uh, they had what they call their AAA, accountability, accessibility, affordability. Not just buzzwords, but they had actually thought through policy and how to make it work. Now, I know for most of us, municipal politics isn't something we pay a lot of attention to. It's not sexy. It's easily ignored. However, don't do that, folks. Every one of us live in a city. There's local ele elections that happen in those cities. There's school districts, school boards that are elected in those cities. Democracy begins at the smallest grassroots level. We can affect change there. And the beauty part is that local uh, politics for municipal uh, school district, the turnout is very low, typically under 20%. So to affect change with your candidates isn't as hard. You just have to mobilize people, get them out to vote. So what should you be doing? If you believe in democracy, if you believe in affecting change, if you don't want to live through what we've just lived through the past couple of years, get involved. Give two things. The most important two things you can give are your time and your money. Well, actually, maybe there's three. Time, talent, and money. Give all three to these people that are running. Vet the people that are running. Find a slate of people who share your ideology and support them. There's nothing more important than this. Not, not watching sports, not doing whatever else. If we don't have freedom at its core, if we don't defend the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedom, and we're not free to make decisions, it doesn't matter about tax policy or beautifying your parks or anything else. We need people who are going to defend our rights as individuals to have a say in our system. And these people, folks, 
are taking the slings and arrows for it. They're being called all kinds of names. I've heard of people who shared stories of abuse, uh, name calling, all kinds of stuff. So the good news for most of you sitting at home comfortably is you're not the one taking the abuse. However, these people need us to help arm them in the sense of we need to equip them with the tools they need to fight this fight. We need to give them money so they can have signage, they can get some ads out, they can go to events. We just need to support them. Does it mean they're going to all win? No, probably not. But at the end of the day, we have shown the people that are in charge, we're starting to wake up, we're engaged in the process, and we're going to put our money and our time and our talent where our words and our rhetoric are. Anyway, I challenge you to do so. Thank you for watching. Uh, you can follow me on my Rumble on my Locals account, and I will see you next time.